giving you a voice, making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. First updates now, FRC is produced in partnership with the Blue Alliance. Keep up to date on all live and archive first robotics events and team stats at thebluealliance.com. And by viewers like you. We need your help to keep fun loud, live, and independent. Help us by visiting our Patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now. You can also support fun live on Twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your Prime account for free and clicking subscribe. Good evening, everyone in the fun universe, and welcome to the Sweet Tea Region Recap for Week 3. Reporting for First Updates Now, I'm John Fogarty. I'm Griffin. And I'm Kristen. Tonight, we're going to take a look at the action we saw this past weekend in Georgia, North Carolina, and of course, the District of Cheese, the Chesapeake area. We have a couple of, also, we're going to have a couple of discussion topics, and we're going to give you some previews for the action coming up next week. But before we get started, tonight, we've got a giveaway for the show, thanks to Redfish Robotics. Fun logo mugs. Let's bring on our producer, Tyler, to talk a little bit about more about this and how you guys can win. Yep, we're going to stick with the same keyword, everybody. So if you're watching the last show, our friends at Redfish Robotics, which you can check out at tinyurl.com forward slash Redfish Robotics, uh, have made some cool fun mugs for us, and they're giving those away. Uh, so these are pretty dope. Make sure you uh, go check them out. they got a bunch of other robotic stuff as well, too. Uh, but if you're interested in winning, uh, because I'm lazy, I haven't had a chance to change the keyword, it's just going to be fun mug once again. Uh, but type that in. Uh, we'll draw near the end of the show. You do have to make sure you click that little follow button near the top of the screen. Or if you like to have five times luck, you can subscribe, help support the show. So good luck, everybody, in winning this and enjoy the rest of uh, the Southeast Region Recap Sweet Tea. All right, so getting things started right off the bat, 64 teams headed down to the home of Mickey Mouse at the Orlando Regional in Florida this past weekend. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> A vast majority of Florida's teams were getting their first trips out into deep space, while a few had, their, had a chance to get a head start. The qualifying rounds only saw two completed rockets, which I thought, honestly, is a pretty surprisingly lower number than I would have expected. And 63 have level three climbs. And, of course, three unicorn matches. Though one was due to a penalty rocket for knocking a game piece off the rocket um, by an opposing alliance. At the end of the qualifying rounds, Team 2152 Smash was alone left undefeated. as They had a solid cargo scoring ability and an extremely fast and reliable level three climb to help them secure the top spot. Their first selection was Team 179 Children of the Swamp, who was ranked third, but they ended up declining that invitation. Their next choice for their first pick was Team 180 Spam, who had shown extremely high speed cargo scoring and some solid hatch play. And then they rounded out their alliance with 3556 Get Smart, who also had some capability with hatches and a good strong drivetrain. The first seed alliance breezed their way through the quarters and semis on arriving to the final stage to face off against the second seed alliance of team 386 team voltage 233 the pink team and 1251 the tech tigers who if you guys don't know this that that's a pretty insane alliance to end up together at the orlando regional that's that that really tells you how tough that event is that tech tigers ends up being that low in the draft order that, that event is pretty stacked the eliminations at the Orlando Regional are even tougher than the qualification rounds. The average ELIM scores the event were significantly higher than the qual scores by over 30 points, but the win margins got a lot smaller. Finals 1 began with Spam making mad dashes back and forth between both rockets to try and fill up the level 1 with as many hatch panels as they could, with Smash working to try and fill the cargo ship bays with cargo. But 1251 came across for the Blue Alliance and played some really insane defense that held the Red Alliance up significantly. The Blue Alliance with T 233 and 386 were able to completely fill their cargo ship together, but Smash couldn't complete the Red Alliance's cargo ship alone. Both teams returned to the hab as the final seconds of the match ticked down, but Spam, in an attempt to reach level 2 to seal the match in their favor, fell back down to the carpet. Now, Finals 2 saw an adjustment from the Red Alliance and Spam crossing the field and try to play defense themselves, but that choice didn't limit the Blue Alliance as much as they had hoped. 233 was 
simply too fast to keep up with, and 386 Voltage was able to hold on against the defensive spam and not drop the cargo until they were in the right space at the right time. And the defense, again, from 1251, prevented the Red Alliance from being able to completely fill their cargo ship. And that really made the big difference in the match. In the end, the Red Alliance came up short, and the Blue Alliance of 386, 233, and 1251 took home the Game 2 win for the Orlando Regional Upset. Congrats to Team 5472 Stallion Robotics on their Engineering Inspiration Award win and to 2152 Smash on the Regional Chairman's Award win, getting them that gold-silver cling bling. <clears throat> Next, I took a look at the Peachtree District Albany event. 31 teams were in attendance with a decently large pool of teams having played once previously at Gainesville or Dalton. This event saw a dip in the overall qual stats as we had no completed rockets, only 26 had level 3 climbs, and absolutely no unicorn matches. From what I can tell, this event was pretty much a cargo ball fiesta, as over 90% of the matches, the cargo ships had no hatch panels placed on it, and very rarely were hatch panels placed on the rockets at all. I think less than 2% of the time, less than 5% of the time, actually. I'm seeing a lot of our district Peachtree District's younger and lower resource teams were gaining a lot of inspiration from Team 118's EveryBot, as we saw, I want to say, a good handful of four to five teams with that type of design on the field. <clears throat> At the end of the qualifying rounds, Team 832 Oscar seated first with some really solid cargo play and an upgraded significantly faster from Gainesville Level 3 climber. With their first selection, they chose 6829 Ignite Robotics, which in their minds was the best hatch capable robot in the field and also had some cargo ability as well. And then they rounded out their alliance with 7499 ABAC Robotics as their defensive partner. The event only saw a slight increase in scores as the playoffs proceeded, but nothing quite as high as Orlando or previous week peach tree events. The number one alliance plowed through the quarters and semis to face off against the number seven alliance of 3635, the Flying Legion, 1683, the Techno Titans, and 6177, Atomic Robotic Dogs. In the end, 832 Oscars quick cargo scoring and guaranteed level three climb partnered with 6829's Ignite Robotics' hatch play. The Alliance was able to outscore the opposing Alliance with relative ease, giving the Red Alliance the win in both of the finals matches. Congrats to Team 1683, the Techno Titans, on their Engineering Inspiration Award win. And congrats to Team 1002, the Circuit Runners, on their Event Chairman's Award win, which is the first they've won in, I believe, over 10 years, if I've heard correctly. And my most improved team of the week in the Peachtree District has to be 5734 RoboRain. From week one at the Gainesville District event with a drivetrain bot that wasn't even fully assembled before the event, to now being able to score a few hatches and balls was a significant improvement, and it earned them their eighth seed captain rank, which I believe is the highest they've ever seeded at a tournament since they were founded. Well, Christian, how are things at the event you were taking a look at? Guilford was definitely an interesting event, to say the least. Saturday went on without too much trouble, and it seemed like this was going to be a relatively normal North Carolina event. But come Sunday, the drama began with the last qualification match. Um in match 72 after a little bit of debate over an incident involving a toppled over robot resulting in a red card more on that later the alliance selections were fairly predictable 2059 the hitchhikers picked up 2655 flying platypi and 6729 rob cobots whose defense play by the way is some of the best i've seen at the events i've been to so far clean penalty free smart tactical Robot can't do much else as it is right now, but if they refine their hatch manipulator, they would easily be one of the best third pick robots in the state. Uh, love these guys. Hope to see them continue to succeed this year. Uh, 4795 eSpots finished in second seed, and they picked up 1533 Triple Strange, which I thought was a little odd given some of the struggles that they had, particularly on Saturday, getting up and running. But I was happy to see their swanky serve on the field for playoffs. I love watching this robot drive because when they're working, they are a huge force to be reckoned with. They also picked up 587, the Hedgehogs, for their just going to send it level 2 climb. <laughs> While Alliance 1 sailed through quarters without a loss, Alliance 2 went out after a tiebreaker. Um, the semifinals were kind of a nightmare for pretty much all parties involved. 
after a nasty bumper to bumper hit between 65 65 and 2059 which took out the 2059's drivetrain. 6729 was able to corral the Defender out of the way to protect 2059's limping robot. However, in the process, they bumped 6565 into the blue cargo ship, where 6565 got caught and stuck. And then 6729's robot lost comms for the remainder of the match. This resulted in a pitting condition, which lasted around 25 seconds, which by the rules is considered extended and egregious, and Alliance 1 was issued a red card for that match. Then we had about a 20 minute wait before the next semifinals match began, and no one really knew what was, knew what was going on before the head referee came out to the field and announced that there had been an issue with Wi-Fi, which affected robot communication in semifinal one match one, and that it would be replayed which effectively erased the red card that had just been issued. Then, while we waited another 30 minutes for the issue to be resolved with HQ, uh, semi-final two, match one, went ahead and started. Still not exactly sure what actually happened, to be honest, uh, but at the end of the semifinals, Alliance 1 and 2 went to face each other in the finals. Again, I really have to commend 6729 and their defense that they put on in the finals. They completely shut down much of the Blue Alliance and did so in a really clean manner, which in this game is actually very hard to do. And I also wasn't sure that they could pull it off by themselves. Even 587 and 4795 got in on some of the defense, counter-defense action, especially in finals two. And these finals matches were well worth the wait. In the end, Alliance 1 came out on top, winning both finals matches. Congratulations to Team 3506 Yeti on their chairman's win and to Team 2655 Flying Platypie for their Engineering Inspiration Award for that gold, silver, cling, bling. Best birthday present ever. And to 7763 Carboro Robotics for winning Rookie All-Star. Griffin, how was your event in Portsmouth? All right, so... At the Chesapeake District Portsmouth event, 37 teams competed in 72 qualification matches. Many ranking points were scored, including three rocket completions, but only one unicorn match resulted in this. In the end, sitting at the top was the added district team, 190, Gompe and the Herd. They quickly picked up the celebrities of the district, 2363, Triple Helix, and ended, up, ended it with 4466, Robo Hamsters. They quickly beat the number eight seeded team and moved on to the semis, where they faced the number four seed of 2106, Junkyard Dogs, 1413, Scrappy, and 5546, Art. The number one seed beat the number four seed in round one, but a failed climb from 190 in round two gave the win to the number four seed. In the last round, 190 and 2363 scored to their best, but were unable to outscore the all-scoring number four alliance, giving the win to the Scrapyard Alliance. In the finals, the number four seed faced the number two seed of 1599 Circuitry, 1610 Blackwater Robotics, and 6882 Fahrenheit Robotics. In the end, the number four seed was unable to deal with 6882's incredible defense, giving both rounds to the number two seed. This marks the first blue banner for 1599 and makes 6882 the only team in the district to hold two event blue banners so far. Congrats to Team 5546 on engineering inspiration for that double silver cling bling, and to 2068 Metal Jackets for their first ever chairman's win and blue banner for their history. But, in my opinion, the best cargo bot of the event was 2998 Viking Bots. They filled an entire the cargo ship entirely on their own on several occasions. And the best hatch bot was 6334 Illuminati, averaging five to six hatch panels on the rocket every match. And then my favorite was 5957 with their light nimble bot and the incredible and mastering the yeet climb. <laughs> Oh, goodness. <laughs> so many of those climbs. Well, if it works. <laughs> uh, I know, right? Headed north to, up in Maryland, 38 teams converge on McDonough High School for the Owing Mills event. 76 qualification matches yielded two unicorn matches, both of them yielding the only completed rockets. Sitting on top was 2199 Robo Lions. They picked 1629 Garrett Coalition and rounded out with 2988 Robo Genesis. They swiftly beat the number eight seed in the quarters, but had to sub out 2988 for 5830 Life Engineering. They went on to beat the number five seed in the semis or er, in semis easily, sending them to the finals. On the other side of the bracket, the classic powerhouse 836 Ruby Bees kept the number two seeded captain or er, alliance with 614 Nighthawks and 3748 Ragnarok Robotics. They easily won the quarter finals. 
then had three very close matches against the number three seed, eventually beating them and moving on to the finals. The first match went to the number two seed with a score of 94 to 72. In match two, the number one seed took the win with a score of 71 to 62. In the final match, it came down to the wire, but the number two seed beat out the number one, two, number one seed with a score of 79 to 74. This marks the f- first Blue Banner wins of both 614 and 3748. Congrats to 5243 Aegis Robotics on Engineering Inspiration and to 1111 Powerhawks on Chairman's. Best Cargo Bot is 20, was 2199. Best Hatch Bot was 4638. And my favorite was 1719 with the 2019 Sec Bot. All right. So. Arguably, this year's de- uh, game is one where defense and the rules around it is extremely polarizing. Uh, and we're seeing some of the full field ram charging that we saw so much of in 2014. And there's probably a little room for improvement on this aspect of the game. Um, it's also an insanely hard game to referee on the field because of limited sight lines, convoluted rules, and combinations in which they can be violated. And trying to run around the scoring table side of the field in these smaller district events is borderline dangerous for trip hazards. Add to that the fact that it is impossible to catch everything and things often sometimes appear very different standing next to the field than they do from the stands and you have a recipe for disaster and angry people. Uh, We had a couple uh, examples of that in the southeast this week. Uh, Griffin, do you want to talk about quarter match 66 at Portsmouth? Yeah, so in the qualification match 66, uh, team 1610 Blackwater Robotics at the end uh, at the end of the match attempted a ha- level one half climb. Now th- they were fully supported by the uh, top platform and were angled to where they weren't touching the lower ramp or the ground at all. But part of their bumper was sticking out beyond the hab zone line, so it was called uh, it was called out of their favor and said that they did not earn the hab three climb, but in the rules it had been stated before that it was only support of that platform so it took about they went to contest it right after alliance selection and it took a whole 45 minutes and a call to hq to for them to finally resolve it and in the end it was called out of their favor and they were not awarded the climb but now the rules have been changed for the district to where the climb must not only not only be within that perimeter or that plane of being fully supported by the ramp top ramp, but also in front of that line. Yeah, that's, it's going to be really tough to see how defense and the way the rules are written as they are right now are going to affect things. So moving on from that, I'm going to get you guys started with the FRC Southeast top 10 for this week. Coming in at number one was team 179, Children of the Swamp, ranked three at Orlando and the Orlando Regional Semifinalists. Ranked number two was 4451, Robots Garage, winners and Chairman's Award winners at Rocket City, who, by the way, are currently the only holders right now in the world of four blue banners for the season, which is insane for a South Carolina team if you don't know our state's history. Coming in at number three, 180, Spam, finalists at the Orlando Regional. Number four, 386, Team Voltage, winners at the Orlando Regional. Coming in at number five, 2152, Smash, chairmans at the Orlando Regional. At number six, 233, the Pink Team, winners at the Orlando Regional. At number seven, 1610, Blackwater Robotics, winners at CHS Portsmouth. And number eight, 614, the Nighthawks. Winners at CHS Owing Mills. And at number 9, 832 Oscar. Winners at Peachtree Albany. And at number 10, 401 Copperhead Robotics. Quarter finalist at the CHS District Portsmouth event. I am... I, I am, I'm in full agreement with the Florida teams. I'm a little bit surprised by the number 10 of Copperhead Robotics because I felt like they... Were struggling the entire competition, and the only thing that they could do consistently was their climb. So I'm a little bit surprised by that, but I'm not surprised at all that Blackwater and Nighthawks made it on there because they definitely deserve the wins because they worked hard and dug deep for those wins. Yeah. And I think we've established North Carolina only votes for the memes, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> so you got a preview for us for next week? All right. So first off, it. The only event next week for CHS is the Oxen Hill event. And to call this event stacked would be an understatement. 
Previous gold uh, medalists for this year include 612, 836, 1731, 1885, and 5724, who have already qualified for Worlds through the Miami Valley Regional. Previous silver winners include 1418, 1727, 4472, and 6543. Others to watch for are 5587, 2534, and 339. My sleeper pick is 2912. UNC Asheville, likewise in North Carolina, is going to be a doozy of a competition, and many are calling it the most stacked in the district, and with good reason. The only big dogs not going to be here is 2642 and 2682, Pitt Pirates and Boneyard. So playoffs at this event will be a good snapshot of what we could expect at district championships. We have four robots that haven't played any events yet, so it'll be interesting to see how that plays out. Yeah, and uh, this coming up week uh, will be the Peachtree Columbus District event. Uh, we get to see I, arguably the second most competitive event of the uh, district. And uh, we're going to get to see a lot of the second running of teams like 2974 Wild Robotics, 4026 Global Dynamics, 1648 G3 Robotics, 1414 IHOT, 4188 Columbus Space Program, 4941 RoboBib, 3635. 4910 East Cobb Robotics, and of course, my personal favorites, Team 1102 Making Magic, and 78883. I'm curious to see what improvements other teams have made and how things will pan out over the course of the quals. I know that my students have made some improvements to almost literally every subsystem of our robot. We even added some automated vision tracking now. So hopefully, there'll be no more slamming of the robot into the loading station wall. <laughs> And now, of course, it's the moment you've all been waiting for. It's drawing time. Tyler, tell us who's taking home that shiny new mug. Yeah, we're going to draw for that. Once again, uh, fun mug. It will be the keyword. We're just going to keep this rolling all night. Uh, so make sure you stay with, stick with us all night with all the region recaps. And the winner for this one is going to be that software dude. Congratulations. And not hosting on this show, so you're eligible to win. Congratulations. Uh, <laughs> I think that's Jeff off the top of my head. Uh, so, uh, but congrats, uh, uh, Jeff is a, or that software dude is a subscriber. So that means we need lots of rigged emotes in chat, uh, cause we clearly rigged it for not only a host, but a subscriber as well. So, <laughs> so congrats, uh, reach out to me. I am sure I have your info, but it'll help us, but we got uh mugs to give away, uh, on the next 30, uh, every single show coming up. So stay tuned with us. The programming team is the best team as that guy knows. <laughs> Well, thank you, everyone, tonight. That's all we've got for you. If you want some more FIRST Robotics in your life and you like what we do, all that we ask is that you let others know about our show and that this is the place to go for more FRC in their lives. If you've got a few bucks to share through bits, donations, or even a subscription, we'd really appreciate it. But if not, we totally understand. We're delighted to have you on board. On behalf of Kristen, Griffin, and myself, and, of course, our wonderful producer, Tyler, I'd like to thank you all for tuning in, and thanks again to all of our moderators in the chat. Our next show coming up is Infimidation, first in Michigan. Talk to you next week on the FRC Sweet Tea Region Recap. Thank you to all of our co-executive producers, keeping fun loud, live, and independent. Pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now.